So today's the feast of Saint Blaise, and I think all of us remember uh, maybe the priest visiting our school back in primary school, uh, maybe even in secondary school for the, the blessing of the throats, or maybe in your school you would have gone down to the church uh, for, for the, the mass. And it's wonderful to see how uh, our faith, you see, we're, we're, as human beings, we're body and soul. So we were learning this in the catechism recently. Uh, since we're body and soul, uh, the sacraments have a, a visible dimension to them. It's not like you walk into the church and then the priest says, and now you're confirmed. You know, what, just, just what, how, where? There's, you know, there's a, there's a prayer, there's an anointing. It's, you know, there's a, the, the, the grace is transmitted in a way that we can perceive somehow through our senses. You know, the same with the Eucharist. I mean, you, we, we could, you could, Jesus could just as easily say, once you cross, cross the threshold of the church, then I'm within you. You know, of course you could. You can, you could could do that if he wanted to, uh, but he chooses to communicate himself through something tangible, through food, okay? So there's a, this, this d visible dimension to our faith, and this isn't, this shouldn't be looked down upon, because we see that even though people's faith might be rocky, at times they'll still hold on to some of those tangible aspects of our faith. So people will often say, yeah, I don't really pray, but look, I'll, I'll light a candle for you. You know, they might find it, they might say, I'll, I'll pray a rose, I'll, I'll kneel down and pray a rose if you, mm, maybe not. But they'll, I'll light a candle for you, which hopefully, see, the candle is supposed to represent the fact that we've prayed. It's not, you know, it's, it's, it's like a, a kind of a sanitized version of a burnt offering. You know, you take this wax, you burn it as, as an offering. Your offering was whatever, 10 cents, 50 cents. Um, and, and this is your, your, your offering as a prayer. I'm offering some money to you. God, not buying grace, of course not, but it's, 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 a, it's, it's symbolic of a, like a sacrifice. This money I could have used for, well, 50 cents wouldn't get you anything these days, would it? Would, you, would it? would it get you a bag of crisps? Probably, no, not eat. My goodness, 50 cents wouldn't even get you a bag of crisps today. Remember them 10 cent crisps, and ten, a 10p bar, 10 penny bar, my goodness. Sorry, I'm old. Um, so you pop in your 50 cents. This is my offering to God. Again, it's not buying grace. Don't misunderstand it that way. But it's offer, like you offer time. Like when you fast, you offer food. You're not buying grace. But you're making an offering to God. You're saying, I sacrifice this thing. So it's, it's my love, my sacrifice that I'm offering to you, not the money, just to be clear. Um, and this is then how, how I, I show my prayer. So people, we, we do need this tangible aspect to our faith. Do you know, like May processions, St. Patrick's Day parades, where we come out and we, we, we do something, something kind of visible that shows uh, this is what we do, this is what we believe. Uh, it's, it's necessary. I mean, like, kind of almost instinctively, when the national anthem comes on, you don't sit there slouching away, dipping your, your curry, dipping your chips into the curry. You stand up, like, it's the national anthem. It's kind of, you know, we stand it's just, we're, we're, we're body and soul, and, and our, our bodies have to reflect, should reflect, what our soul believes. So it's kind of a uh, <clears throat> very important uh, rule in our faith, uh, the favorite expression of one of our community members here, lex orandi, lex credendi. What, what we pray shows what we believe. What we pray, what, how we pray, what we pray, it shows what I believe. So if I don't pray, it shows I don't believe. It's kind of blunt, but there you go. I mean, Mark Hart says, uh, prayer uh, isn't the expression of our relationship with God. It is our relationship with God. Prayer is our relationship with God. No prayer, no relationship with God. It, it, you may believe he's there, but believing someone exists, that's not a relationship. That's, I may believe there are people down in Australia. I don't know any of them. How many is the population of Australia? 40 million? I don't know. Maybe less. I don't know any of them. Not one. Not one. I believe there are people there. They exist. I have zero relationship with them. Don't know any of them. Okay? So believing someone exists doesn't mean anything. Um, we need to have a, a relationship. And part of our relationship with, with God is expressed also through our bodies and through visible signs and things. So Ash Wednesday, we receive ashes. Uh, on our foreheads. These days it'll probably be dusted over the top of our heads. That's how it was done in Italy anyway. Um, but then today we have the blessing of the throats. Again, it's another kind of a visible thing. And these tangible things, people do hold on to. They'll hold on to those kind of aspects of our faith longer than they will hold on 
to the more invisible aspects of our faith, like graces received through maybe the rosary or something. They let go of those kind of things quicker than they will a physical blessing. And it's, it's not, we don't want to kind of get lost in the hierarchy of prayers, uh, but uh, the point is that often these blessings like <clears throat> relics and, and things like that, they do respond to a certain need that we as human beings have for something tangible in our faith. That's, it's a good thing to recognize because for us as priests, it's, it's something that we should, we should tap into without falling into, without falling into superstition. That's okay. Look, they're always, they're, we, we always have to try and maintain a good balance without turning our faith into all signs and symbols and tangible things because all these signs and symbols are signs and symbols of invisible realities, grace. Okay, so we shouldn't get lost and just focus uniquely or solely on the physical thing. Of course not. So St. Blaise, the blessing of the throats. St. Blaise, um, just a little bit of history. Um, he lived in Sebast, so it's, it's modern-day Turkey, eastern Turkey at that, uh, Armenia back in the day, uh, part of the Roman Empire. And even though the Edict of Milan had been proclaimed in, in 313, allowing the free uh, practice of the faith, uh, he was still persecuted. There were, over in the, the, the east, there was still a, a residual persecution and violent persecution of Christians. And he, as a bishop, <clears throat> was seen as a leader, was a leader, and was taken and threatened and tortured. And uh, while he was taken away to be beheaded, uh, a lady in the crowd implored that he would bless her child who had some sort of a choking illness. Was some, some, some say choking on a fishbone, some say it's an illness, doesn't really matter. Either way, she implored his help. He blesses the child and the child is miraculously cured. And ever since then, after his uh, martyrdom, uh, through beheading, he became the, the, the intercessor, if you will, for all ailments of the throat. That's why we receive the blessing today. Uh, interestingly, this is the same city where four years later, uh, Legionus uh, was still persecuting Christians. And he asked his local governor, uh, Agri Kola, I think, I think his name, Agri Kola, uh, to continue to, to, to root out and persecute Christians. Now, what was interesting about this particular story is that there were 40 Roman soldiers who were Christians and very devout Christians at that. They were uh, part of the, the palace bodyguards. They, they, were, they, were, they were good soldiers, well-trained, so, well well-disciplined soldiers and very young men. And they were Christians. And this came to the attention of the local governor who decided to dissuade them from being Christian. So he tried to tempt them, look, look, give up your faith, make these sacrifices to pagan idols, and we leave you go free. Uh, if not, you will be imprisoned, and you will be stripped of all military dignity, and you will return to your families in shame. So they were, they were imprisoned, they thought it over, and they said, no, we will not renounce our faith, we will not and renounce our love for the Lord. Uh, then they were th threatened with, with torture. And they were beaten, and they still chose not to renounce their faith. When they were summoned then before the governor, they sang the same psalm that they would sing when they were, when they were running into battle. So they, there was this band of 40 brothers who strengthened each other. You know, It was like uh, uh, Psalm 53, Lord, in thy name, save us. You know, so they're walking into this room singing this psalm. You know, you can just imagine the, the, like the governor would be there thinking, you should be petrified. I can destroy you like that. Why are you singing? You know, it must have been entirely frustrating. So they were sentenced to death, anyway, long story short, uh, by exposure. Uh, so they were stripped and made stand in the middle of a frozen lake. Uh, beside the lake, then, uh, a bath of warm water was erected, fire put underneath. So at any moment, if any of them wanted to, you can leave the lake, you make this little sacrifice to a pagan god, in you pop, into the bath, all good. Okay, so 40 guys out there 
singing psalms, praying together, uh, reinforcing each, other, each other's faith by their example. At a certain point, one man caves. I can't do it anymore. I can't, I, I, I can't, I can't do this anymore. I can't do it. So he leaves the group. And he's heading towards the bath. And it seems that once he got into the bath, the change in temperature actually killed him. But then a Roman soldier, standing guard around the perimeter, seeing the inspirational example of these men, drops his arms, takes off his armor, and joins them. So the number remains 40. After three days, they, there are differing accounts as to, as to how many had actually died at that point. It seems there were still quite a number of them alive. So they were brought back into prison and uh, beaten with sledgehammers until they were dead. And then their bodies were burned because the governor didn't want to leave any relics. So therefore, the ashes were thrown into the river. But once the guards had left, people went in and retrieved what relics they could. And so to this day, then, the 40 martyrs of Sebast uh, are still venerated throughout the world. But you hear a story like that, and it's just, I, I don't know, it's a, for myself, it's on one hand inspirational, on the other hand, you just feel like the greatest wuss because like the little, the little sacrifices we, we have to make or the, at times the friendships that we may lose, what we stand to, what we risk by being Christian, by being Catholic, uh, can seem very great. You know, a negative comment on Twitter. You know, a couple of negative uh, comments on, on uh, a pro-God post on Facebook. You know, oh my goodness, your world is shattered, right? No, their legs got shattered with sledgehammers, right? They, they knew, they knew what it was like to stand for Christ uh, uh, to, the, to the point of shedding their blood. So when we think about these martyrs, St. Blaise, and only four years later, these 40 martyrs of Sebast, uh, these were people of great profound faith, of profound brotherhood in, in the deepest sense of the word, like we're sons of the same God. That makes us brothers. So when we receive the blessing of the throats today through the intercession of St. Blaise, we remember these great saints in heaven, these great martyrs, the profound love. Remember, it's never about the pain. It's always about the love, this great love that they had for Jesus' name, so much so that they would empty themselves, give their lives for love of him. May we follow their example in the small ways that we are asked to sacrifice ourselves today. Amen.